We're learning new details about two separate collisions of U.S. Navy ships in the Pacific in 2017. The first was a USS Fitzgerald. It hit a commercial vessel off the coast of Japan, killing seven sailors. At the time, the collision was the deadliest for the U.S. Navy in four decades, until another naval ship, the USS John S. McCain, hit a different commercial ship last two, two months later. Well, that accident killed another 10 soldiers. A two-part investigation by ProPublica is providing insight into how major mistakes by naval leadership contributed to these collusion, coll collisions. Robert Fadarecci is one of the authors of that investigation and joins us now. So, Robert, I want to start, if you don't mind, with the USS Fitzgerald. What are some of the new pieces to the timeline of the day of the collision that we didn't really previously know about? So we obtained thousands of pages of internal investigative records uh, that the Navy compiled. Uh, and what we learned is that the state of readiness for the Fitzgerald was worse than we, you know, we had ever seen before. Um, you know, there were 22 certification tests that they could use to uh, prove that themselves seaworthy and battle ready. They had just passed seven of those. They hadn't even qualified uh, for their chief mission, which was anti-ballistic missile defense. Um, you know, there had been a fire before the crash uh, that, you know, created sort of an uh, electrical system failure. Um, so, you know, the, the ship's crew, you know, their email system was was uh, failing. And for both classified and non-classified material, they were using Gmail instead. Uh, you know, the radars were in questionable shape. The crew wasn't totally clear on how to use them. Uh, you know, the, the, the problems were really stunning in their scope. You make that point. You also have noted um, in your reporting that the Navy's leadership, that they actually failed with the USS McCain at one point. What was it that the Navy leadership did wrong that led to catastrophe on, the, on board that ship? So what we found is that up and down the chain of command in the months and years before these historically deadly crashes, uh, there were warnings that were ignored by the Navy. Uh, we had sailors on both ships before the collisions warn their superiors that a major incident or deaths were possible. Uh, we had the commander of the Seventh Fleet tell us on the record, uh, you know, the Seventh Fleet is the one that includes the McCain and the Fitzgerald, that he had been telling his boss, you are pushing me too hard. I need more men. My ships are in disrepair. Uh, he was ignored repeatedly. Uh, and then all the way back in Washington, in the Pentagon, uh, we had two former undersecretaries of the Navy tell us that they had warned senior officials, you know, the secretary of the Navy and senior officials uh, at the Department of Defense, that the fleet was being pushed too hard. They needed to stop focusing, buying new ships and take care of the current fleet. And again, they were ignored, rebuffed. Uh, we had uh, a commander in, in charge of surface readiness who went public in 2013 with his concerns. And a few months later, uh, the Navy's top military officer asked him to retire early. Uh, you know, he believed it had a chilling effect on other senior officers speaking out. You know, th th this was this was a, you know, uh, a tragedy that was, you know, for foretold again and again and again. Um, and Navy leadership ignored those warnings. Robert Fadarecci, thank you very much for your reporting with ProPublica. Thank you so much.